Hello, my name is Kaisa. I am the CEO and uh, co-founder of TreeColor. And we are re reinventing 3D printing in a sustainable way by making it possible to print from wood waste. Globally, there are 200 million tons of sawdust produced every year. All this leftover material can be upcycled and given a new value. This is exactly what we are doing. We are combining sawdust with non-toxic binders and creating the first fully eco-friendly 3D printing material on the market. You have probably heard about uh, 3D printing, the way it's uh, disrupting markets and changing the way things are being produced. Sounds like a great new technology, and it is, if there wasn't one problem, namely 80% of all 3D printing materials are based on plastics, and when printing, you melt the plastic at 200 degrees. This releases toxic particles and fumes in the air, and that is damaging to the environment and to the people working with this. Our main customers are companies and designers producing wooden objects. We are helping our customers diversify and customize their wooden products, at the same time reach new markets and uh, customer segments. And we are doing this by helping them save costs and time and resources. Uh, at the moment, there are two options to produce uh, complicated wooden objects. It's the CNC machine, and you can do it by hand. The CNC machine itself can cost more than 100,000 euros, and the material loss can be up to 80%. Now, crafting, doing things by hand, that's a great way, and it's not going to disappear. But when crafting complicated wooden objects, it can take even days or weeks and it's very expensive. With our solution, it's a matter of hours. Our solution is the 3D printing device that you can easily attach to your 3D printing uh, printer. This enables you to use our sustainable 3D printing material based on sawdust and non-toxic binders. Compared to crafting and CNC, you can print any kind of wooden objects faster and easier saving money, resources, and the environment. In addition, we are helping young designers enter the market, and this way we are accelerating entrepreneurship and creating new jobs. We have done quite a lot of customer discovery. We found out that there is a problem when producing uh, complicated wooden objects because it's, it's too costly and time-consuming. Uh, we already have uh, five designers who have asked our price offers and who are waiting for our solution to hit the market. There is also an interest to use our solution in the restoring and restoration, uh, repairing and restoration industry. Our material will cost uh, 20 euros per kilo. That's uh, comparable with the price of uh, plastic filaments. And our beachhead market uh, is uh, the 3D printing material suppliers in Germany and the Netherlands. And we are planning to reach 60% uh, of market share by year four. Here you can see that uh, the CO2 production compared, comparing plastic and wood, uh, then if you use wood, then the CO2 production is actually 87% uh, smaller. So if we are reaching 60% of the beachhead market, we actually save more than 300 tons of CO2 from being uh, released to the environment every year. Our team got together last uh, October at the Circular Economy and eco Venetian Hackathon, where we won three main prizes. Since then, we have gone through three development programs and we, ha we have won uh, several prizes uh, on different uh, competitions. Our team has a highly skilled uh, engineer, a 3D printing expert, a designer, a material scientist, and an IT expert. We believe that the future is all about circular economy, and we are ready to bring the first eco-friendly 3D printing material to the market. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. It looks beautiful, what you can do with that. Pretty cool, yeah. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, questions from the jury. Don, you want to go first? Sure. So I think
think you're right on, right on trend here with on-demand manufacturing, local manufacturing. I think it's a good idea. I'm curious what the secret sauce is behind the technology, and is it protected? And then what scale are you at right now? At the moment, we have uh, our first prototype, and I have one uh, example. Uh, Erki can uh, show you. <laughs> it's our first uh, material sample, but uh, it's not the only material that we have to develop. We also are developing the extruder, because in order to have uh, a material that has a higher percentage of uh, wood, then the extruder has to be uh, adjusted. So we are working on uh, advancing the material and uh, advancing the extruder part as well. You've talked about 60% uh, market share by fourth year. Uh, would you maybe mention about the competition? What? Yeah, thanks, that's a great question. Uh, actually, uh, the main competitors uh, at the moment are plastic filament uh, producers because there is also uh, the bioplastic uh, called PLA that is uh, derived from uh, cornstarch. But we have done quite a lot of uh, research about it uh, and actually it has quite a high uh, CO2 footprint because you have to uh, first grow the corn and it takes a lot of land. So actually this land should be used for uh, food production. And the PLA itself, uh, it's not actually uh, compostable. Sure. Are, you, are you thinking about offering this as a service, or are you also thinking about actually selling the printing device, printing you know, your devices? The box, with the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, we can also uh, sell it as a service, because we want to have a higher impact, and if we sell it as a service, then we can reach more, uh, more people and more customers. But at the moment, uh, the, the concrete business plan at the moment is that we are selling the material, and we are selling the extruder that you can attach your, to your uh, 3D printer. But actually, there is a possibility to scale up uh, to other industries as well, because this material, uh, we don't have to use it only for the 3D printing. We can use it for uh, all other types of uh, solutions. Uh, solutions as well. <laughs> Kirsten, final question, yeah? Uh, is there a dependency on different wood types? And have you tested different wood types? Yes, we have. Actually, there are different types of uh, sawdust as well. Like uh, one sawdust is this um, bigger particle, but actually there is a lot of uh, fine sawdust as well. And uh, this is where uh, uh, wood companies who are uh, processing wood and making furniture, they have a lot of leftover from this fine sawdust. And this is exactly what we need at the moment. And uh, we already have like two or even more in Estonia. There are many uh, companies who have a lot of leftover, this fine sawdust, and they are just willing to give it away because they don't have anything to do with it. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.